to stand again. I'm happy to stand again. All those in favour? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous decision. Vice Chairman, fairly certainly John Crutton would be happy. Yes. All those in favour? Unanimous. Right, on the agenda item three, to co-opt additional councillors and non-councillors onto the committee and voting members, well, we have a full complement at the moment. No, because we have to start again, just me. Oh. We have to read it every third every year. Right, well. So I think we just, we just basically say that Mr. Harrison and I would put Adam in place if they want to join and put them on as voting members. Yeah. Is it possible to use co ops who want to be voted on to attend meetings? I don't know. Yes. Hi, Adam. Hi, Vice Chair. You've just been put back to the Vice Chair. It's actually happened to put uh, Adam, Chris, and Darren on to. Just to let you know, uh, Marion said that she doesn't want to, well, she's been thinking about it for a while, whether she should continue or not, and she's decided that actually, um, she's, she's going to step away, but she says if we do want any advice or if, we, if she can help with anything, please call her, please meet her, um, but she'll just not continue with anything at all. Item four, to adopt non-council members onto the committee as non-voting members, if they may, do we have any interest? Apologies for absence. Uh, John Marshall and uh, Marion, but obviously Marion is second round. <coughs> Declaration of interest. Yep. Uh, is John not coming? John. Or Marshall? He's not coming tonight. Because uh, I thought he was coming because of the first and meeting. Uh, just sorry that I was informed that that's potentially... Oh, he's, I, he's, I, I definitely had an... He definitely had an apology from me. I'm not making that up. No, no, that, that's that's fine. But actually, you're not called it then. So if we are, we'll Because we changed that so we didn't have to have him there. Did you? All right. Well, I'm sorry that I'm incorrect. No, look, only if, only if the, uh, the policy document's been altered. Oh, well, uh, maybe the lot. One from um, Thurston. I thought you would change that and then change that. We definitely changed it. I thought Thurston was not saying. We definitely changed it. We voted on it because it was when. Um, yes. Um, we, definitely, we definitely changed it because it's when we changed the wording. So when we change the way we, we say that we could co-opt additional, this one doesn't say that we can co-opt additional councillors on. We can adopt, we changed it. When Gemma and John joined, we changed it to say that we could co-opt additional councillors on, which isn't in here. And we removed the bit about Thurston having to be here because John was coming. But then Thurston mm -hmm. uh, had somebody else, they've got a co-opted member. You know we how we don't have to be here for the call it for the call. Well that's not what's on the We will yeah, yeah. carry on with the presumption that we can verify this. If we can't verify it, then the meeting will be null and void. Well, I think everybody's here, so I mean, you just discussed it. Sorry, okay.
Interesting times, right. Any public questions? To approve the minutes of meeting of 28th of April. There was only one typo, as far as I was concerned. 46 play area. Not yet. Don't have reported. Not myself. Not far, yeah. Otherwise, no comments on minutes. Finance to receive update on current position. on financial school reading.
who like, because I went past the other day, it's just all grass and it doesn't even look like it's got kind of like patches on it or anything because it swings or anything. Yeah. We'll look into what are acceptable surfaces. Yeah, okay. But in the meantime, do we need to order? In the meantime, I'll still, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep looking for a, a boat delivery to keep us going. Uh, but alternatively, we can get the one through where we got the last ones. Yeah. We get more than that if we don't get that. So. I do, I mean, we could see that previous years, roster inspections have raised the issue of low mark levels, but never made it a serious problem. No, they're much better than we did it, and it, uh, the inspection will be early June because it's just the end of time. Yeah, and we anticipate that with a top up of bark. Yeah. So that's one really one couple of the next couple of weeks. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think the park can get a pretty heavy use on the third day and stuff. And the GP, we want to get that on. We need to get on. So, do we, are we all are we saying we go to buy some bark ahead of the GP? Yeah. Ahead of the inspection. Okay. Well, I mean, it's half well, term. Yeah, yeah, it's working out what's up on the easy one because we've got, we've got two bags there. And like you said, it worked for the for a few months, but then it's like, you know, it's worked for days. And just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you need to have bulk to be able to go to the end and just to kind of spread out. I'll have a look at some contacts and look tomorrow and see if there's any. I'm not sure what will be something. It is possible to get a book tipper down the lane. Yeah. But it's just yeah. for them. For them, the convenience factor of getting it in little bags is it can be dragged and moved and laid quite quickly. Mm. Whereas otherwise it relies on the water body. But yeah. you know, the weather, hopefully the weather should be reliably good and we can get you up to this last minute. Can you be as large as possible, right? Yeah. yeah. We've done that before, but this has to be. Play area. Streaming. Have we. Well, made any progress uh, I asked, and um, the, um, so we, they apparently do visit every other week. So, um, Can I make a comment? Yeah. For the people who don't know what I'm talking Sorry, about. Yeah. Somebody has streamed some of the grass, but not the weeds. <laughs> yeah. I kid you not. So, what I've been told is that they do go every other week to string grass. They're visiting tomorrow, apparently. Um, they do um, spray the weeds, but not every visit. Um, you know, and then obviously it takes a few weeks after you've sprayed it for them all to die off. I think that's why they weren't streaming we weeds from what I gather, because they were treating the, the plants spray. spraying them, so then they didn't string them. But it's just it's just that clarity, isn't it? So maybe we'll keep an eye out tomorrow and catch them when they're there. And see what yes. they do. Did, did you get this from John or yes. yourself? Yeah. Right. We take note. So yeah, they do. They've been spraying the weeds, and they have been streaming the whole. They, they claim that they stream the whole of the grass when they're there. Right. So everything is being either sprayed or cut tomorrow. Monthly inspections, no change. Um, I'm keeping the brambles cut. I know the one of the tires that had sand in it got pinched by the local youths and got trundled across the field to the <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, far side. Please let me think that they put themselves inside it and then roll it down well, just like a barrel. <laughs> Um, the sand tires, in fact, are used, I've noticed, by particularly by pumpkin pie customers. And, yeah. um, I think they could be, should be topped up with some fresh sand. I have, obviously, lots and lots of tires, big tractor tires, etc., etc. And if you'd like something that can't be readily moved, <laughs> I could get a, a really You're just setting a challenge. You can fit more of them in there. <laughs> like a tractor tire, you've got to be keen to do oh, yeah. So I, I, could, I could put a tractor tire there. I would think the one that got nicked was A, smallest, and B, had, didn't have much sand in it. Mm -hmm. So right. it was easy to have picked up and the sand fell out. 
most if they had more sand in them, yeah. it's going to be a lot safer. <coughs> do you want me to get some sand and fill them up? Certainly. If you're a willing volunteer. Stupid question. Uh, presumably it's not coarse sand. Clay park sand. Clay park sand, yeah. <laughs> A lot of the stuff in there, you say, it's, really, yeah. it's very gritty. Yeah. It's all, yeah, but that might just be because it's very, very old now. They could do with shit sieving. Um, but they do poke that, like my kids always go and poke and it was sticking. Well, it's not photographing it, but it's on Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. Is there two tyres there? There's two yeah. in the middle, yeah. They're about, they're about this deep. Right, I'll get, I'll go and have a quick look and I'll get sorted myself. Thank you. Is there anything else we need to pick up before the hospital inspection? I did have to pick up a few, and I think we sort of dealt with lots of the things arising last year. Um, the only thing that had occurred to me was whether, I mean, not, not for us, but particularly, um, some, uh, when I was, you know, pu only pushing my child and not using this for myself, one of them seemed a little bit squeaky, so we might need to get this spray up type of thing. And no. The gates at the moment, and the springs working on those, and they're not are they essential that they do with the nails and gates? No, I didn't take them off. I think they are. I just think it's hard enough because I couldn't remember if they. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to get the closing bit tricky there, but not this one. No. I don't think you'll have them. They, they were sticking a while ago, so I got quite the dangers. That's excellent. Well, the track uh, chains and padlocks off the Fields I ski. Uh, the padlocks are all seized, sort of. So I'd suggest that we need to do that before the have any big bark coming with plans. I sort of bolt crop if necessary. Yeah, I think it's, I think that's the yeah, that, what we need. Yeah. Right. Uh, any further comments on work on the play park? I did have a little inspect along the back fence, it's all still in good repair. So then the yep. that's tie up job has done a great job. Did you say you wanted to get a working party together to move stuff off the back uh, hedge? Yes, I forgot. When we cleared the hedge, um, the stuff we got got locked into the back of the uh, bog field. Um, but unfortunately we threw so much and ended up falling back against the fence. Which means we can't walk the length of the fence on the bog side, cutting back any growth that's threatening the fence as it did in the past. So, a body or two at some point to uh, drag the stuff away from the fence would be handy. It's sooner rather than later as well, because yeah, the, the, because if we can't get down to the fence, the, the, the weeds and nothing's are incredible. Um, of course, it's not. Right. Um, Saturday morning. I've got to take my kids to work. I promise Richard would stay at home in Iceland's and Castle. We'll be doing all sorts. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goodness knows what we Well, yeah, see I what I can do. What time are you thinking? Oh, 10 o'clock. You okay. should always delegate something. Thank you. Right, Redfield drainage issues. We have installed one new offshoot from the east side collector pipe, courtesy of John's wonderful trenching machine. Oh, yeah. Um, that's done and dusted. Seems to be working well as well. Yeah. When we, had some, when we had some good, good amount of rain there the other night, had a walk down and it's, you know, ejected water. So. Good. That's it. Um, um, cost of the pipes, John. Sorry? Cost of the pipe. No. Well, yeah, it was left over from the job I was doing. So. Donation. Donation. Okay. It, it was a, well, I won't argue, but. It was, yeah, it was, it was a big 10 metre piece of pipe, but it's, Useless for other jobs, so it's fine. We'll live with that. I think we're, we're going to need to buy something to do the other bit, though. Yeah. So we need to. Okay. We'll record that as a, okay. a 
as such. Um, and yes, we want to do one more, which will be about the middle of the, um, the run. And I think, with a bit of care, we could cut up some right angles to it, yeah. make access so that we can actually roll it. Yes. Um, if anybody, it's got a set of drain rolls we could use. So we right we'll, we'll put the new drain into the, the field drain that's already there, yeah. and if we open up, up enough area, we've got a good opportunity to get both, both sides of the pipe. Before you put the oxygen on. Yeah. yeah. Because when we opened up for the one we've just done, I was able to reach down and put my hand in the pipe, and it's just a soft, silky, soft slurry. Mm -hmm. it's, which is white So do we need to get what? Or do we know some about the volume pump or do we need to do hyacin? What's the situation with that? Probably is be as cheap to buy a set as hyacin. Yeah. We've got some drain rods, so you could give them a go and see how they work and then if they work, potentially yes. you can buy some. side of the football pitch, so about like Jenna's side, the side of the goal, uh, and it seemed to roll fine, and it didn't, didn't do any mark of the grass surface or anything, so, um, so I'd be happy after the next rain shower to, to give the playing field a roll. Ten minutes, you please. Oh, right, sorry. Right on.
I'm seeing them on Saturday, yeah, I'm going to college. But he's gonna be, he's gonna have a chat about what he wants to do with it. Yeah, well I was but before he does anything obviously I'll ask everything on here. Just you know. Yeah. Okay. I mean the whole field could do with the wheat with with a with, with, with broadleaf wheat. The problem with and this if again just being a devil's advocate, the problem with broadleaf killer is it kills the clover and stuff like that as well. So it, it is kind of detrimental. I, th I think a spot sprayer on the duckings and, and thistles and stuff like this would probably be better. Certainly, it would be a better from a wildlife point of view. But the broadleaf kills um, yeah. and you know, nettles, duckings, clover, buttercups, pretty, pretty, much all the, pretty much all the good stuff that you like to see in the field. <laughs> But again, he would be better to be better to advise on that. But if he wants to use it, then. I'm sure what John Stewart wants from the football, football service. Yeah. Right. Any comments, further comments on football playing surface? <coughs> 11, recreation field and the play area of regeneration project. Maga. Right. So, um, I had quite a lengthy chat with Carol the other day and we went through some of the potential fundings and things and started to look at applications and whatnot with regards to how we do applications for funding and such things. She's quite confident about the mugger, she's quite confident about the pump track if we wanted to go down that route, which I think would be good because there's quite a lot of money at the moment around for the youth type sectors. Also, a lot of things that are specifically related to football. So we've kind of started to identify channels that we can go down with regards to getting the funding. We are going to have to do some public consultation at this stage, and I think that is going to be because we need to work out what route we're going to go with the mugger, um, with how much we are investing, and we're going to look for in it, um, because we need to justify the money that we're asking for on it. And I think there is an argument that we can go down the route of refurbing what's there if it's what the public wants and it's what the village requirements are. So we've started to put together a questionnaire and a plan for public consultation simply to get that information of what do we want. Do we want a multi-use games area, as we've discussed, where we're going to have all of the games on that court and utilise that with a special service, etc.? And have we, are we going to be able to justify the use for that and the cost that it would cost to do that? Now, we've... Um, looking at the use that we have down there at the moment, we are going to have to do some survey of current use of it down there. So that is going to have to be us actually observing how it's used on a day-to-day -day basis um, and look at... Um, just, uh, is anybody using it? Because it's, it's yes. just, it is used, yes. But uh, what, on, that, on, uh, on that dangerous grid? Seriously. I know people are going, sorry, sorry, sorry continue. Can I finish what I was talking yeah. about? Is that okay? Excuse me, can we let the cancer finish, please? Sorry, I'm losing my trail. Um, so that can be used, it would have to go down the monitor on a daily basis. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to observe it on a daily basis of what's actually going on down there. Um, and then we're going to have to inquire into what these people actually specifically want to it. That's going to come back to John as well, whether or not he's going to be wanting to be utilising it. Um, and once we've got that information, we can start putting an application together. Um, I'm going to need to have had the public consultation done and dusted probably by the end of the summer for us to get the application for the target fundings that we've got in question. Um, and I'm really trying to... Yeah. Sorry for the thing. It's okay. It would probably be a good idea to have a stall of a sign at the fair. Yeah. And say, what do you... you know, what so do you I'm thinking that we're going to want a whole set up at the fair. Um, and I think that the, um, the fair already said that we can... We can go ahead with doing that and we will have something like that. And it might be a can style tokens in the box type of thing. Mm. But we're also doing the questionnaire. So my plan is is that we're gonna and so I'm going to get the public consultation for the mugger done. We'll probably see about kind of the youth plans that we've got as well and the play area. 
So those are things that I really want to put forward at the fair and before. I need to backtrack and talk to other people about the buildings and toilets plans, but those public consultations, I'm going to try and get rolling in the next few weeks. And I'll put it forward for everybody to OK it and have put their input on, on it. Um, so we've got, the, we've got the fair, we've got the parish meeting. I am going to do a Facebook survey. Um, and then we need to po get it posted out to all of the groups within the village. I'm going to utilise Pumpkin Pie because they've said they'll help out and they said they'll help with any survey work. Not just with how they use it as a childcare facility, but also how clientele from the village and neighbouring utilise the facilities down there. And then the school as well, scouts groups. Um, so if anybody else has got any other input, obviously all the groups are going to use the village hall, WI, um, and whatnot. So if anybody has got any more input, you know, and also the church have said that they will help us with survey work. So I really need a broad spectrum of how I can get the you know the questions out to people um, and get as much information back in as quickly as possible because obviously the more we can justify it the more we can show the benefit that's going to be gained by it and the more money we're likely to be able to get for it but the thing is with regards to the mugger if the, the mugger's use has changed like in the when because I was in the village when the mugger went up and originally to my recollection it wasn't locked up and you got the keys um, off somebody and it was bookable only. It wasn't just open or access all the time. And obviously as time's gone by and it has, you know, then that usage has changed and now it's open all the time. Um, but we could see a return of it going, getting back to being locked up if we have to maintain it to a specific standard. Obviously a safe standard it's going to have to be, but it's going to, but we need to look at what the village actually wants from it. Do they want somewhere where they can go and just play football on a hard surface, which isn't going to be warm, you know, isn't on the on the field in the winter time, where it, where it's lit and they can get there in the evenings, or do they want something which is going to be more dynamic than that? Um, so that that's the, the the main gist of what you know that we're going to have to get that information because it's it's all well and good us saying this will be fabulous, but unless it's what people actually want, we're not going to be able to justify it, and also the ongoing costs which could be higher, but obviously are going to be higher um, if we do go down a um, you know you know bigger route and things with it. Because um, there is that thing: do we actually want the number at all? I mean, it's there, you know, um, but we just need to find that information out. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm up to with that. Right. Well, then simplest thing is, we, on the one hand, we yeah. have the um, synthetic turf and sand job yeah. at a pretty high watering prices, which would be all things for all people. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the scale, there is, as has been done at Viner Park, where they have sealed the surface, and it's a hard, painted, uh, totally weatherproof surface for Reputed in the region of 2,000 a pitch. And would that allow, sorry, would that allow football, basketball, tennis? Yes, uh, the the what, what, yeah. what I think we need to do is it, it, get it's... hold of the people who did that yeah. and get the full specification of what it is and what it will cost us for them to do the same job on our. Um, a second point is the surround of ours. It all looks shabby, yes, but it's still doing its job. It is doing it, and it's whether or not replacing the boards alone would be enough to make. I mean, I haven't been, I mean, apart from when I went down, I did all the brown boards, I haven't done them. It's got, it's very, I mean, the boards, I would say, need to go, but whether or not they can be replaced. That they are a standard. Would they buy four boards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Board would be yeah they would be in some way. Completely. In fairness, they are in reasonable condition for, mm -hmm. for their age, I would say. They are so. But, yeah. But there is debt. Yeah, they're just not going to be bothered to I think more legitimacy to the fence and security mm -hmm. that they might be good for. And I think the other thing that, um, that we discussed is 
we can go for, there's different options with how we go for funding things I and mean, the way that Claire and I wrote it is we split things up into separate sections but we could go for a whole youth sports application which would include the mugger anything that we want to do on the field potentially pump track um, and potentially toilets or whatever if we wanted to say that that's what our project is and that would mean then if the mugger was done to a slightly cheaper thing then we'd have more money to spend on other things so it really depends. We're going to have to be quite. Once we've got the more information on people, we can be a little bit, you know, excited about how we want to go for the funding as well. And that would mean that when we, you know, go to tender, you know, we'd be able to free, potentially free more spending more money on different things, depending on how much we get. Um, but this is a, a very time sensitive situation that we've got here. I mean, I think we're all anticipating that we could be heading for a recession and the funding for these things is going to go and it will be snapped up. So we need to have a project which is ready to go so that if more funding becomes available, we can just step straight in there and get the applications in. I mean, we're talking from when things go live, we've probably got four weeks. Uh, and it just goes. We've discussed the Vina Park um, new course. Have you done any research? Uh, no, I haven't looked at it on the jam, but I'm going to chase that over here to pass it to Gemma. Well, well, if you want to do the whole project, they, they, they won't say you've got to allocate 20% of the movie. Not, not no, 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 no. saying that. Uh, but as long as it's all within their field and that we kind of. Because generally what would, have, what would happen is we put the application in and if they thought that we were the type of project and community they wanted to help, they would then send somebody out. Then we'd be there saying, this is our vision, this is what we want to do with it, this is why we want to do it, this is the evidence of what we've got, of how it's been utilised, this is what, what's been poorly utilised or what's been poorly catered for in the past that we want to resolve, and this is how we want to do it. At which point they'd be then they've got the flexibility then to say what they do and do what not want to give us money for. Yeah. Um, we have to go that. But as I said, there will be small pots of money that we say specifically we want to get some you know a trim tray on installed and we want bits of equipment for that. Or we can say, go for a big umbrella. We want to you know, here's our project. Here's our our vacuum play area regeneration project. What would you like to give us money yeah. for? Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. So would it would it be true to summarise this then? We need the public consultation in terms of what people want mm -hmm. and what they would use. Yeah. And then, at the same time, um, we need to know just what minor part type work will or won't do for us. Yeah. And we need a survey of companies. Yeah. Yes. And so, so I mean, if can, um, can I, I would yeah. think the survey of use would be a bit seasoned. It is Nobody's going to think, yeah. think tennis or cricket. It's not that, and it's also they? looking at the mug of that's going to get much less use <coughs> now. But over the winter months, and I can say this because, like, you know, I know when that light's on and I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that, that night's most of the fall that I have. But they're using it in the evening, sometimes up until quite late, yes. just as a place to go before the round where it's lit. Um, so it, it is highly seasonal. So. Although we're going to have to do survey use, we're going to have to do a retrospective who has used it and things. And this is going to be targeting groups which aren't usually the ones that are going to answer our questions or think, talk to us. But we've got to push it so that we're saying that we really are doing this for you. Um, so if anybody has got any kind of ideas on how we can target those specific um, groups and we're saying that, it's going to be you know, going to older teenagers. Um, I can take the old, I'll take teenagers to the old part of the ground. Because even if they don't come to scouts and explorers, they know the ones, yeah, you know, yeah. those kids know the other kids. Yeah. I mean, all I can do is try and catch them on the wee and not in my garden. Uh, so, <laughs> so, hey, it's 20 minutes in my room. I think one of the things that needs to be considered is with the current condition of it, mm -hmm. the use of it, it's going yeah, to be, it's it going to be much improved, <laughs> that there'll be a lot more use yeah. Um, I think this is also something that we should be talking to not only St John's Street about but also the school. Because obviously the school have got the yard, they've got the hall, but if they had a specialist surface down there, would they be doing their kind of the you know, taking trident onto that and things like that? Could yes, they utilise yes, that? If there was a toilet. Yeah, but this and this well that brings on to another thing. 
Um, spoke to Simon Vickers, he's really helpful. Um, he, he, his, Vickers provide portaloos of various quali quality, so right from the, the standard building one up to, he doesn't offer as many of those because obviously you can't compete with Nixon's, but all the way to like luxury products. He says really, it is an expensive option for us. Long Farmington have recently done it, is it Long Farmington? Long Horsley have recently um, had a, done what we, They've had a, a quarter loop on their um, recreational site for a while, but it has been a sort of like stopgap while they got a, you know a, a better a better system put in place. And they've done they afforded that because he basically has given them um, you know he, he did it as a sort of community donation towards them. He says on if you catch Nixons on a good day, he estimates that they would charge you thirty pounds a week would be one of the best deals you'd get through Nixons for a bog standard you know festival style you know worksite quarter loop. You're not going to get it much cheaper, he says, because the trouble is it's the servicing. It needs weekly servicing. You might be able to reduce it. If it hasn't got a high use, you could probably negotiate that they might empty it every other week or even every three weeks at a push. But he says the problem is they're still not going to reduce that price because that's effectively their right. bottom line price for servicing port to lose. Um, the only he says if you can't, if you if you don't want to go down the servicing route, you have to be connected to the mains. With our um, sewage levels, you know, you start to talk about pump increasing the costs again. So he was a, a bit, um, he wasn't trying to put us off, but he said, you know, it's not necessarily going to end up being, it depends how long you have it there, it's not going to end up being a cheaper option. If we were definitely going ahead with the building, we knew when that was going to happen, you could think about whether you would afford building the price of having a port to move to fill the gap. But um, the other thing, he, he did talk a little bit about welfare units because he said you could put a, like, a welfare unit on the same goes the full-scale building, so that would be, you know, your canteen and portable all built in and a little bit of, you know, possibly a bit of extra space that you can have a little office in or whatever. And again, the servicing on that, so you'd have to you'd have to pay the price of the, the welfare unit, but then again, servicing is about £30 a week, possibly £40 a week, depending on what you put in. So, um, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if that, that's necessarily an option. I also spoke to Hensel's, we, we were, the reason I was speaking to Hensel's was because one of the quarterly we previously, one of the eco news we were looking at was talking about you have to get slowly, slowly emptying every so often. Um, Hensel's estimate that for an ordinary domestic sized tank, which he said was about 1,500 litres, which sounded about the same sort of thing as they were talking about in these toilets, £200 plus VAT, that's probably an annual job, but again, subject to rising fuel costs. Um, and then finally, I talked to Healthmatic, but they haven't. So, Healthmatic are a big company that do provision of toilets of all sorts, portaloos all the way through to Ecoloos. They also do servicing programmes. Um, he was going to send me some information that hasn't come through, but he was saying that they've got a toilet. He, he started off um, one of the ones that, what's the name? Not Kazoo. Mm -hmm. really? No, oh, not Kazoo. Do you know which one I mean? The, the, the one with the Kazuba, the, the oh, yeah. Kazuba Castle. He started off with Kazuba, right. and then he's now moved to Health Matter to help them deliver their eco um, toilet offering. He says they've got a new design project coming out called the Zero, which is, uses very trivial electricity. Um, so you could plug it in and it would use a very minimal amount, or, and we've obviously got electric on the field, or you could use some solar panels if they didn't want to um, wire it up. And he said the difference is, rather than being a pure compost style loo, it's got something called a conveyor flush. I don't know how it works, but he said it's a bit more palatable sometimes because it feels a bit more like, you know, it's a bit of a stepping stone between the pure mm. compost right. style ones and the building ones. The interesting thing, because I did tell him about our long-term projects as well, he was saying that that style toilet could then be transferred, and it comes with the building, but if you did go ahead with the building, you could then transfer that in because it would just be like having the option on the back, um, you, would, you, would, you would move it inside. It's designed to be used in buildings so as well as that. Think, thinking about the drainage issue, yeah. um, you know, we're saying the, the problem is the drains are surface mount yeah. almost by the time you get to the right. Yeah. The, what's stopping us from lifting it up a little bit and having a ramp to, to them? Nothing. Because then you could then you could still have mains sewer. It just cost again, and then connection costs, I suppose. But then, but then surely that would outweigh that would be totally outweighed by one one cost of another. Mm -hmm. So 
it would it would throw a spanner in the works for the music building because you'd probably have to jig things around a bit. But you could put a you could build up, put a couple of toilets at a higher level and have you know a steel ramp going up to it or a wooden ramp or something. Like that. I I personally think that all of the use of what we've got down there is pivoting around toilets. Yeah. I mean, even more so than the parking situation. I mean, once we've got toilets there, it opens everything up to so much more. And I think we need to do away with this idea of incorporating toilets into a community building and just get the loose down there. They can be separate, we can plan around it and things, as long as we keep them out of the way and whatnot. And we put them somewhere where we're relatively certain that the rest of the building doesn't need to go up and be looped around them. Because as soon as we've got increased use down there, then we can start saying that we've got a great need for a community building down there um, and that we're, kind of, we're, we're accommodating more people down there and giving them more usage, which means that applications for funding for a community building become so much more easy. So I think we, we just need to go, let's get to all that's sorted uh, and we'll move on from there. Yeah. So do you want me to, if I put all together what I've got, um, because it's not going to look exactly the way you not go with it, but I'll type, I'll put together all of the research I found on toilets and send it round. Um, but it's again maybe something we can consult on in your team because, like I say, get them down there, see the work they need. Uh, I think definitely it's possible, to, and it's obviously the cost of doing it, but if you think about somewhere like Northumberlandia, their whole building's a base up, isn't it? Yeah, Northumberlandia is a, like, a prefabricated building. Yeah, and it's on the slope, you go up the slope to it, it's like on a higher level, so it's, it's not like it's never been done. You just look, you'd only have a main, like clean and maintenance cost, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have a big well, yeah. like contractor fees and stuff, would you? But then you put you know, is your cost gonna be equal to getting a proper swim toilet in which case do you just go for that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. I'll, I'll put down and I've, I have found quite a few, not obviously they're, they're slightly different. I've found a few reports that have been done like quite detailed reports for um, town councils. There was one about this, and um, there was a report I found, it's a little bit old now, but it was about um, putting toilets in somewhere in the Highlands, or you know, somewhere that they were in. So I think, even though it's not, it doesn't all apply to us, they're quite friendly, but I'll send them around, because then it's just what other people have considered, and it might put us, it make us think of something we haven't thought of. Yeah. I think this needs to be fairly, uh, uh, well, as soon as possible, yeah. because yeah. there's a lot of yeah. implications with trains, mains, water, electricity, we're going to, before long, we'll need to decide yeah. which direction we're going to jump and get a serious survey done of what is practical. Yeah. Should I regret we won't be able to call them the Jubilee Surely there has to be a drain. There has to, there has to be a drain when it's down on the south side of the rock field. There is one halfway down the slope. There's a main, main sewer. There's a main sewer that runs across the slope towards the um, the processing plant. Mm. And whether that can be tapped into, I, I have no idea. I can then be tapped into. You know, potentially we're just looking at the wrong area. We'll, we'll maybe try to make the job hard, but then right at the gate. So, uh, so I missed what the problem was with. The, 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 the problem with having a conventional style of yeah. building there at the moment is that the, drain, the drainage issue, uh, there isn't enough. There's enough kit there for. Right. Um, so so while you could get you could get running water there, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, getting rid of the, the soil would be, right. would be the issue. Yeah. Which is it's too close to the surface. It's too close to the surface by the time you reach the wreck field. Right. Right. Okay. And then you see they go down towards the main street. So that it's Has anyone spoken to Rich Jones about it? About? I mean, about it. It was the, what you said about he's going to be building his house there. He's going to have to move up to the sewers. It's not that plan. But I think by the I think where the youth club is, right. it's all right. But okay. by the time you come that bit further into the field, right. it's okay. too. It's, yeah. it's level out. The land is dropping, and the drains yeah. are rising. Okay, I see. So this is what um, Simon Vickers was saying to me that you could put, you can put a pump in, but then again, that's then immediately adding an additional cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we? So, is it alright? Just uh, back to the, um, the sandfill astroturf, obviously that comes in different grades and I was wondering about the 
surface, is it just suitable for football or is it a better grade and is suitable for um, tennis and um, basketball, that kind of thing, because it comes in different grades. So there's, that was one of the questions. Sorry, I, I missed the beginning. The this, line. The, no, this, no, no, the sand filled that, that's... So, so yeah, yeah, Gemma gave a really good grade that we could do the maximum number of sports on. That was the whole point of it being yeah. multi-use, which is what Stu had was researched and was in his It's report. the same as the um, long... Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. obviously... So that's what, that's what we, the original aim was for... Yeah, because I know when we went up, when it reopened, yeah, it was, that was discussed, but obviously sometimes the grade has gone yeah. down. Um, the other thing was um, the usage of the, um, cur the, the current mugger. Um, I have seen occasional people playing football on it, and I have seen dog walkers in there, training their dogs in there. Obviously, you're aware of the nighttime things. Um, I know people don't play tennis on there, but who want to play tennis on there? I know people who would quite like to do some, um, uh, in effect, like walking, um, not basketball, netball. Yeah. So, that, so there is um, elements of the community who would like to do things like that. In terms of tennis, that can be all year round. Because in the previous place that we played, we played all year round. And if there was lights, we played tennis on the on a night time. But obviously, you're not going to see that because it doesn't happen here. So that's why we're doing public consultation and the questionnaire would be aimed at that. But if you're not if you're not aware that these sports are possible, then then you, that's what I'm saying. So that. we're aware those sports are possible. That was the aim, the original aim when we were talking about having it as a multi-use games area and getting it surfaced and it was including the tennis brackets and everything else. But the question was, which came back to it, is whether or not we can justify doing that. So what we need to do is have a public consultation to inquire about what that use is and how much interest we can have in that. But all of those sports are available on the current surface right, up, right. At, up yeah. at um a Viner Park. It's 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 multi purpose as well. None of those things, but are they involved in like, you know, people, you know, dive into say goals? Um I have and, no idea whether Yeah, so I think this this is what the idea is, is to make sure, you know. The original idea was to go for, for that service so that it did incorporate as many people as possible, not people that were just, you know, able to stay on two feet. Uh, I don't think um, playing tennis, I can remember falling over quite a few times right. playing tennis. I can, you know, get knocked over playing, but, you know, all of these sports. So okay. um, there's quite a few courts that you see round about that are hard surface, yeah. uh, that are generally repurposed. So um, I'm just making... Um, that you're aware that all of these games can be played on a potential mugger surface that at 90,000, or they can be played on a surface that potentially would be a few thousand. And also, uh, it comes back to uh, a survey in terms of um, people need to know some of the ongoing costs for these things because that cost is going to be coming onto the parish, onto the precept. So I appreciate, uh, you know, I want to see lots of things going on there, but it, it comes at a cost. So one of the things that needs to be done is to have some sort of um, uh, cost implications of these we, things. We, we, that is obviously, some we, things are difficult because obviously it's um, <clears throat> what uh, what you put in is, is what you get so out. So yeah, we've got the breakdown of how much it costs to install, but we've also got the yearly maintenance estimations no, that, for those different services. That's great, but, and also a business plan, because I'm aware that the parish council needs to have a business plan, and, and some of these charitable things, again, you need a business plan. But I, again, I appreciate that you can't have yeah, a particular so business that, plan that because you have different elements that you have to factor in. This is where this project, um, over the last 10 years, has, has fallen down because there hasn't been um, enough research and things. So it is very, very pleasing to see that... Uh, that people here are actually moving things forward in a positive way, and it's really nice to see. Yes, we are trying to make an all, a, a fully broad research action yes. to move forward. Yes, and like I said, that hasn't hasn't been able to be happening in the past because it hasn't had enough people to actually put things forward and take things forward. So, fingers crossed, this continues. I think we've chewed this one to bits. Yeah. So, Gemma, if you 
let you know what you need to get input from us and also to us out but shout out if you want any help putting together the survey and then how many you it there but I'll be far yeah. And if anybody can think of any groups that I might not have thought of that I need to outreach to and you yeah. help us as well. Brilliant. What about the issue in the local business as well? Yeah, that's a good one. So we can do it, I'll do any advertising, you know, anything that like, anything that you put on our share and all our platforms. Are we thinking of making it a 3D market sort of thing, so if you want to start the phone doing that then? So I was looking into that, yeah. 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 Um and the other thing is I need to design a party kind of propaganda campaign so people know what we're doing and this is happening so that we can get their input and things. So I will I will get a rough design of that out to people as well, and it will be like our little logo for a campaign on their own. I'll see if I can get a graphics in person to. So. The bridge. A nice idea yeah. in the bridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, definitely in the bridge. And then a nice one for graphics in person. Brilliant. That's a as well. Excellent. Facilities <laughs> building. Do we have any update from the scouts? Uh, no, Mr. Um, Hogg said his apologies for this evening, and um, he is busy working on. Um, an updated design and uh, a plan as we discussed at last meeting. Right. Woodland Walk to receive an update. Now, anybody not familiar with what we're talking about? I've heard about it. Sorry, I've heard about it yet. I'm not familiar with it. On the wreck, the south side dropping down to the river, all the through the wooded area. The intent is to put a, a path that snakes down from one end reaches the river, meanders around and comes up at the far end. Um, it will need clearing, it will need a path. Um, I was looking at his contact ecology at Camp Council. I am waiting for a call back from the team. So, Miss, sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I, I, obviously I, I don't want to interrupt, but it is relevant to this and to the biodiversity group. Um, firstly, the, that piece of land that we're talking about actually isn't in the remit for um, the rec field. It's actually in the parish council's remit. It's not in the terms of reference. But it's, um, it's, I'm not saying this to be awkward, but the biodiversity group um, with felt and can. Um, they've got this link with Felton Can who want to actually look at land and have um, future sort of input into the nature and how things are, are developed within the village. Um, if that land was put into the portfolio of um, the biodiversity group, then the, that committee and Felton Can can actually work together. Obviously, um, Councillor Cuthbert's on both um, of the committees. Because Felton can actually have uh, a large group of volunteers who are already um, active in the community, as, as John knows. Um, so they already have links with NCC and the ecology. So it, it's a way of linking the, this project. Right and left hands. Sorry? Right and left hands. Mm -hmm. Right hand and left yeah. hand. Talk. It, it is what I was really going to and was about to say that we've had the meeting with the Biodiversity Group and launched one uh, with CAN there and they were interested in this project. Um, so obviously we did look at that, but we definitely, I think we've got you know, the scope for working in conjunction with them. Whether it's whether or not we need to put it into the remit of the rec field to get it tied into everything with regards to funding and whatnot. I think that idea has got scope because I think one of the things that when we're look, looking at the survey and the use of the rec field as a whole, it one of the biggest uses that's come there is dog walkers and people just you know go for a stroll. And this is going to link onto that really nicely. Um, obviously, you know, when we've got you know we've got to have toilets down there and things like that, it is going to be a, a pleasant place to hopefully go for a, for a walk if we manage to get this to work. So I think you know, there's got a need there of if we can get it linked on to the remit of it. But um, Cam are already quite interested in it and things. And we were talking about potentials. I would be interested to know what CAMs would expect their input to be. 
So I think with regards to if we're doing any planting of trees, um, we will be clearing. Yeah, so we will be clearing trees, but we also need to look at, and this is going back to ecology as well, is what we are going to be allowed to clear and what we are going to be able to um, take out, what we are going to be able to cut back and things, because um, we're letting these up, we're going to need you know, um, consent to be doing that. Um, but then there's also the area which is underneath the overhead pylons, um, where we can't have trees that are going to mature to a high height, but we can do coppicing. And um, we were just listening with one of the, um, I don't know if any of you have been up to the Ashington Community Forest, where they've got like the hedging clubs, um, and they do this, um, what is it called? The, where they plant the willows and then weave them together. Oh, yeah. And we're thinking about like a mini maze, things that could be at a low level and um, introduce more biodiversity um, into it, as well as um, you know, features of interest and whatnot. Um, when I did speak to the ecologist that we've had around, she was saying that low light by shrub and bracken isn't something that they like to get too protective over and things that we could consider um, development in those areas of scrub. Um, I think and also Felton can because they're working with NCC I think they've already got good links with the ecology yeah. there and there's, there's tree um, specialists and there's a lot of um, monies available that they could tap into the sort of charitable things that are available that but I think Fiona's right as well as a um, as a labour force if we're doing these things if we need to be doing these volunteers and things I think they'd be up for it um, they do a really good job yeah I, I think the potential by putting it in into to the biodiversity group is that they can and because Gemma's already here it can be run in conjunction with, so you sort of, as a group, you can concentrate on doing, you know, the the rec field stuff, but it's interlinked, like like you say, because it, yeah. it's, it's all part and parcel of the same project. Because they, they do a lot of the, the, the hard work, I mean, obviously the initial trails, I think you were saying about, wouldn't, wouldn't be putting hard trails in, you'd be putting soft trails in, mm -hmm. so using the logs to create the paths that used to be there, you know, sort of 20, 30 years ago, reinstating things like that. I'm sure can would be very willing to do because it is a sensitive site they've, they've got the ecology there so we'll you're already ahead of the game you're not having to keep going backwards and forwards to can we do this can we do that because you have quite a lot of specialist knowledge with correct that group as well, right? yes i actually personally uh, had them down and help me plant trees and hedging and so that were brilliant the knowledge that's there you couldn't pay for it you know so make sure no, it's, well, yeah, I mean, it seems to me, before we literally discuss anything else, we need to know what we can and can't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of book, footpath, we can duck and dodge round trees, round yeah. areas. I mean, so the, the question is just bulldozing a path, bulldozing a path is fairly yeah. simple. Yeah. Um, we could do with the site survey. I tried. My blue earth allows you to roll the clock back, but even early 2000, it's not much use. No, but I think that's where felt, um, felt and can would be beneficial because that's something that you know they're what they're used to doing. Um, they've got the resources in terms of the manpower and things. But like, but even if you don't go down that route, it's it's actually not in your. Um, terms of reference so when you come to have a look at your terms of reference if you want to add it back in then put it back in Felton can have got certain aspirations of what they want to achieve to want to achieve and um so that's the decision is it still is tony the chair of can yes um, tony Clayton. Tony Clayton, probably. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I just, they are also quite interested in anything which we're doing which is incorporating you know renewables um and ecology uh biodiversity and anything you know i yeah i know we, what we want to do is bulldoze a path down and round and back up don't use the term bulldoze simple seems to be it's not what we want to do anyway <laughs> i want to do more than that well that, yeah, that's what it started off as 
Yeah. But I accept the need to link in. Yeah, but you know, and like you know, our boxes and things that could be potentially put in there if we if we can't do things that are going to add features of interest. Um, there's also yes. um, there's also um, if we go down the looking at the arts council as well, they do things with um, arts council. Yes, the arts council. Uh, they do things with regards to uh, wildflower planting and. Um, working arts into natural environments and things. I know that sounds like a bit different, but when we look at what we've got down on the riverside area with the poetry in the benches and things, that's kind of a theme that we could look at incorporating down there. So we can look at- wet feely tree or something like that. Along the along the way, and what we have a couple of little yeah. feely places. We drive every air to Kiel there to do the river walk. Yeah, it's yeah. like 10 minutes. And so having, having things like that really just a really yeah. good idea. Last actually, time. The, pur the purpose for doing this for me in the beginning was to, you know, the people who aren't, aren't quite as accessible, aren't quite as fit as they used to be perhaps, they can't be going for a three mile walk, you know, hike across the groves anymore. And to have something on your doorstep yeah. that you can go back, go out and enjoy, <laughs> for that reason alone is worth doing it. Yeah. And I think that if we put that trail down there with points of interest in it that isn't just a bulldoze trail that has something that's got features on it, Pumpkin Pie will walk around that with a group of children every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fear is doing something that we shouldn't, isn't it? Oh yeah, so, but so it's, I, I think this has got a massive scope and we need to explore it, but first of all, we need to find out if we're allowed to do it or not. Um, I think we should put it back onto the Rep Hill Committee in terms of reference for a so that we can incorporate it into this project um, and simplify funding, although I'm probably just saying I'm creating more work. <laughs> I don't see why it's not within our remit anyway. No. I don't, how much is this project likely to cost? Because it doesn't seem like it's going to be too... It cost, from, cost very little. Well, yeah. But um, if I can get some funding to make it better, um, well, this, is, yeah, it's, you know, this is where fundraising and stuff can come yeah. in. Yeah, I, I think we've, we've talked about this before when we, when we had the, um, you know, the fair, that the fair have said that they want to, they've got their pot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they do make money, if Richard doesn't just spend it all on the crime and all the um, is that we can, um, you know, that they've got that that they want to put into village projects and they're very, very excited about what we're doing on the, on the rec field. So. I will continue. I will uh, I'm ask you to come as well and see if they've got contacts, but um, and then um, continue. To, if I do manage to speak to MCC Ecology, I'll ask all the questions and work out from there. So, to summarise, we're all in favour of a walk, and we need to discover what we can and can't do in terms of hacking, chopping, planting. Um, do you have to say hacking yeah. as, do you not say hacking when general is outside the room? <laughs> um, no, nobody give that wrong machete. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, it's allowed a machete, as long as it's not a chainsaw. <laughs> Sorry, we need to work out what we, need to do, what we can do in terms of hacking, chopping. And liaise with can, etc., to uh, to evolve a more sophisticated plan. You can we can take that back to the next biodiversity. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Right. So do we action then, list. Do, so do we then say we're going to contact can and get the ball rolling? Well, you know, yeah, I just thought that's what we just. Yeah. yeah. I'll speak okay. to Richard. Yeah. I just I like a bullet point. I like to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. written down, look, arrow, sure. it costs just can. Okay. Yeah. Because what? Sorry. Can I, can I just ask a question? I mean, we went to your first meeting for the biodiversity mm. and Khan came along and gave a presentation. So it seems to me you've already established that linkage in that committee and that seems a natural fit to it. 
why any duplicate and kind of the same thing in this committee, I don't know. Does it, does it affect on the rest of the project, I would? I think it was well, just being worth their funding routes that we're looking at. As, as Fiona has already said, it's, it, in the in the terms of reference, that that land is not in this committee's remit. It's a, it comes under Felton Forest Council as a so as a total council. council. set up the biodiversity group to do these to things like this, yeah. so it just it just seems that that is the natural fit for it the whole so that that's up and running it's got all the organizational skills you can set you, you've got the link to actually move it to, to, <laughs> to, together but it doesn't look like we want to walk go no it's already on there it's, 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 it's part and parcel of the same same thing. I mean, um, it, I think it. Well, there's nothing to stop the two committees working. That's there. exactly. It. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's it's, exactly. There's only Gemma. one council here. <laughs> yeah. It's like I said, Gemma is 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 the link, you know. So there's no, and anybody else can come on, you know. To, is so that they're, they're part of the link. Um, it, and obviously, Gemma and I, are, from what she said, we're on the same wavelength. You know, I've I've seen all of these same things that she's talked about, the art stuff and the trails and things for children. It's it, it, it's Where's great, it? but 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 it's the it's the ecology element that we have to be careful with. So yes, um, well, yeah. this, this is accepted. And we're yes, we're yes, I know. But I think John, uh, Mr. John Croom's just obviously basically saying going around in circles. Yeah, uh, we'll just. Um, I think it. I, I, I think it is a good idea to hand this off to the biodiversity group then in that case. The whole thing. Well, I think so, because we can help if we're asked, you know, we, if, if, they have a, if they have something that they need to run by us, then, you know, it would, chances go if it's to do with finances, etc. it has to go back to the parish council anyway. So maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not talking myself about the project here, but if, if they're going to see it through to the other end, then who will be to stand in the way? You're a substitute member of the biodiversity committee. Well, no, I know that. Look, I think it just needs to get done. And if, and if, and if there's a passionate team waiting to go and ready to do the job, I'm not going to stand in the way. We can always bring it back into funding. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, 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 I suppose we, we, keep on, we, we, keep on our, we can keep it on our agenda. It's okay. No, I was just saying, don't do anything around funding before it's yeah. bad for us to see. Because if we're nowhere near ready yeah. to go ask it, then and that's already done. We can keep it on our agenda for a regular update. I think I think Richard's quite keen for it to come over. So, but obviously it's it's down to the voting members on the committee. What what happens? So we are. Are we? Have we now moved on to handing this over? Well, you know, I think I think so. I think we have a skill set available, uh, and like I said, you know, a lot of very intelligent people who are used to dealing with this. Perhaps, perhaps they're the better ones to do it. Because, if, let's face it, if they have a problem, they can come back to us. We're not going to say it's your problem now. Are we? Or are we? <laughs> I'll be honest here. What is making me pause, in all the years I've been here, mm. property committee, working group, whatever, have achieved the same. Mm. But the same could be said of us previously. 
Club with, res with respect, then, I've got the Oval, the South Lane Working Group and the Lay-By Group. We're, we've actually moved all of those projects on because we were the group. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't. No, but that... that wasn't with it within the remit of property management. Uh, no, but it's it's a working group. The point is it's a working group and if you have people working on a project like you are now with the building, yes. then it moves it on. So if you've got a group like CAN and the biodiversity group, then I, I think I believe it can be worked on. Uh, you know, oh, certainly. Without, without splitting heads, obviously we're aware that I'm the chairman of that group and it, you know, it's not that we want to try. The property, manager, the property group has met once and, you know, I've done it as much as I possibly could with that. And the last full parish council meeting, I had to, to ask for extra help because I couldn't achieve the, the new member for the side. And, and putting it out there to, to, to you know, it's potentially gotten the job sorted. So I do understand your reservations. If can disbands, it may never get done, but then we still have a biodiversity group. We could always do it again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So where's the lead going to be for the path? Biodiversity. Bio, yeah, we'll put talk to the biodiversity group. I think I think there is. Sorry, you mean physically? Are you talking about? Well, there's talking? going to be both, but in the first instance, it's going to be the planning and the right. Well, I mean, Gemma's not here now, but Mrs. Pedrosi acts on the on biodiversity group and I think if it was if it was formally asked if they wanted to take the project on you know to, to be frank then it's their problem you know they they would like they, they will be able to project manage they will be able to, to make hopefully make steps forward and decisions and I think we need to be here to help you know fine do you think we're stand, do you think by keeping it as our own project um, we're sort of saying this is our project to do because I think Getting it done is the most important. Yes, I quite I agree with you. Getting it done is it, what we want. This, this is this. The question of a path down has been rumbling around for about three years. Okay, and was res resurrected recently. Mm -hmm. um, it is now incorporating the eco elements. Yeah, fine. If somebody else can. Make it work. Excellent. Well, in the light of the, in the light of being a triple S I or, or you know, well, it's, it's a, not. It's like, well, it, it, you know, an e ecologically unstable area. You know, we have to be really careful what happens there, and there's obviously habitats and stuff. Then, I think it's the, the best people to do it are a nature group. Okay. But I will, you know, I would, I would obviously like to. To say I'll, I'll help with the project as, as much as I can. But. So we're handing it over to. Well, I think so, yeah. To the Biodiversity oh. Intervention Agency. There we go. Okay. I think the, the thought is just to uh, gain some feedback from them what kind of time frame they expect to do this, and then we've got to look at the budgets to feed that back in time. For the Action list to the extent not covered above and agree action as required. Brambles around slide area sorted. Park levels low discussed. Weeds and all weather caught need to be treated. Yes, this needs. Is that part of the discussions within the, the spray about? Uh, to be honest, the discussion that we had was just around the playing surface of the, the core field. Uh, but I'd like to say I've seen them on Saturday. New contract. In Saturday's 
outside the oral port. Or around the outside. Around the outside has been sprayed because generally saying she's been they've been uh, strimmed. They've been strimmed and I think they're spawning it as well, aren't they? As part of the contract I'm not sure. I, I, I admit I'm okay. remiss in not checking that. I'm intending to check. Either way, if it's not on the contract, if we give John Stewart a nudge, he will get it done. Mongo surface, ongoing. Mention of a solid table tennis court. Full drainage of field in hand. Usage of CCTV to combat dog fouling. Ongoing if we ever bring corn into the new area. Yeah. Right track pile resolved. Tree inspections are now. Yeah, we did. have nudged. Yeah, so where we got to was that we had sent it to the parish council with a couple of quotes. Um, so the two companies gave me quotes, the third company advised that they would just do a walk around with us and then tell us if we needed to um, go down the route of doing any can't say the word specific, specific yeah. thanks John, <laughs> specific tree inspections on the sort of proviso that they would get the, the job to do that and I said well we could, unfortunately couldn't agree to that because of the fact that we would have to um, we have to get prices and we could, you know, they, they were providing a quote at that stage. Um, so they didn't want to take the work on that basis. So we're back to the original two companies, or do we go down, I don't know, is there an alternative way? Do we, I mean, in Fells and Can, is there enough expertise to do it? Is, is what, what I was thinking of. The, the advice from the tree officer, Barry Wilson, was that the county council said a report could be made by a Competent person it didn't have to be a exactly. tree expert, and as long as it was, as long as it was maintained, you know. So you mentioned sort of after stalls, it's not if the report was then we looked at. Yeah. So I don't know where we're going forward, really. Do we? Well, can I butt in here? When we had the first round of paperwork back on this, amongst that was a set of guidelines for inspecting the trees, looking for rot, splits. Was that one of the companies gave us that, wasn't it? Yes. Um, and I would think one of us could work on that and keep an eye And if there is we inspect the trees with a crude, with a critical eye. And if there are any obvious things that need attention, then we get in a further professional specific. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's the way Barry Wilson was leaning. So a competent person, you know, somebody could have a look at it and then to raise a flag with a specialist. We could photograph when we're doing the inspections, can photograph the trees to form a record. And say this needs watching every quarterly or every storm. I hate to throw in to this one, but the word competent. Well, it, it's used for a reason. You yeah. have to have experience and knowledge of, and the possible ill effects of. Yes, that's concerned of competence. So that's what it means. Yeah. You are right. Not just go on. Which is the, the fallback of the information given by the tree company. The extreme fallback is we have to check with our insurers. The insurers don't, when I've asked them previously about risk assessments in a general sense, rather than specifically about trees, they are they are reluctant uh, to put any definitive rules or guidance about how often they want you to do these sorts of assessments because I said you know risk assessments how often they to be made that's for you to do as part of the risk assessment part of the risk assessment should be how frequently are you risk assessing based on footfall level of risk etc so I think the insurers are just going to say 
you need to assess the risk of your trees and decide how often to get them inspected. And then you record that, and then if there is a problem, we have to present our risk assessment, including how often, you know, the decision. And they were inspected. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that they will tell us what to do. They'll just say you have to do it as part of the... Is it worth the past fire again? Because mm -hmm. it's the busiest round in the okay. public... It's, it's the it round time of storms, isn't yeah. it? Is there knowledge within Felton Cam that we could? That's the part, yeah. Well, again, I think it, it's worth asking. You know, I always find it um, the best um, method of competence is to group. If you get three people make the same decision, it makes a massive difference. So perhaps it's something a group of people can just go around and do. I think I, I don't no. think the property would go down in, um, that uh, route because, like you say, it's about this competency and insurance and things. But through the NCC, they do have these tree champions. Um, so it may be that can know who the local tree champion is and you know link it in with with that. So it's so it's worth contacting can and these tree champions and. You know, it's. I think you'd find that what you've described about what you've been um, advised by the tree officer to have a competent person and, and building on what you've said, that that person or group of people would have to be from the council and not from an outside organisation. Yeah. They can. Why? Why would anybody in an outside organisation want any risk of any legal comeback or anything? Well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I think if there's somebody, some NCC related, that, that it's worth having a, a, a look see. Yeah. Worth I mean, on health and safety matters generally, I've been involved with it a lot. Um, the most important thing about health and safety is you document everything, mm -hmm. and when you say you're doing inspections, you actually do it. There's, there's paperwork to show you've done it because when you go to court, that's what counts. Okay. Health and safety doesn't stop accidents or trees falling down or whatever. But if you turn up in court and you haven't done what you said you were going to do, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, so photographic evidence, that kind of thing, with the trees. I think the question is really, is any of it, do people on this committee feel competent to do this job or do we have to say we accept one of the quotes at whatever cost that was? So we, you know, we went round in circles. The last time we, was that we decided that we thought the first initial inspection should be carried out by a professional and then we could take it from there and do it going forwards, you know, as an interim measure. Just going on my experience of tree surveys, we do a lot of walk around through work and stuff. Various people. You'll generally get if you get an initial survey report, they'll obviously map out your trees and number them, and then you then go, Well, you've got tree one to one to five hundred or whatever. You then know the ones you need to inspect more regularly than, than the rest. So that's something that would potentially be part of that survey that gets carried out. I think you're making a major point there that we we end up presented with a good survey. You, you're going to get physical you get good foundation to work and on and yourself and from there and we, we get an essential initial document of what's what. Yeah. And that's what we got to, that's where we got to as a committee the last time. You know, we took it to the parish council who wanted to explore the option of having an initial walk around but without guaranteeing the work and it, it, <coughs> then it didn't work. So I think we just go back to these two people who've got some names and yeah, send us, get new quotes, yes. and then or see if they're still current. Nothing, it was just uh, the, the trees and things are, yeah, the, of the record part of the. Um, 
parish council, but actually what you're talking about, the tree surveys, are actually for the whole of the parish. Mm. Yeah, it's not just the rectory one. Signing for gates. Um, I did say I had to say that I have this no smoking water, but I still need to get uh, the... Um, I remember when I went after the last meeting when I said confidently had the signage, I realised later that we had also talked about getting additional signage with the numbers on. So that's to do. So we're still yeah. awaiting. Facilities building, awaiting out more yeah. information. Field surface, sorted, moulds. Um, what's that in the traps, Tom? I've, uh, got, I've got, I've spoken to Ian and he knows I've got them. He has been putting down traps, um, but I've got the ones to pass to him. Right. Regeneration, mother of the toilets, play area. There was no mention of the play area and new equipment. No, but I've got, I'm waiting on quotes from a number of people. I will, I will chase it all up with the general farm together. May I just make a point about the CCTV element? The CCTV element of the of your plan that potentially you're going to look into incorporating that into your uh, financial um, your funding. Um, obviously, there's an ongoing cost for that. I was wondering if the committee had actually looked into potentially moving the footpath instead of going through the where it does currently goes, is actually taking it to the left and then behind the play park, if the play park is being redeveloped. Because one of the main issues for the CT CTV was for the dog fouling. Um, and Sorry for that, I, I'm, I've lost, I'm lost. Do you mean divert? So where the, there's like a kissing gate at the moment, move that? Um, no, the kissing gate can say where it is. It's actually, say if you're coming in from the gate from Wrecked Lane, you go straight on and then you turn the left. I was actually thinking potentially take, coming in and taking a left and then going behind so you can direct dog walkers and walkers away from the wreck field. So put a, put a passageway between the ball field and the play park? Yes. I mean, if, 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 that's the, if that was the thinking, it was because of the dog the mess that's on the field. Well, is, is that what you're suggesting? Yes, yes. Well, I'm not suggesting, I'm saying it is a suggestion. I think the mess on the field is caused by people who let the dogs off the lead to run around and just stand on their toes. Yes, the dogs yeah, but that correct. Also, anyway, but but the then what it allows you to do is section off that so you keep the, plate, the, the field free of dogs because it is your field. So you can, you can actually section it off so that dog walking and dogs would have to... I'm not sure we could exclude dogs because it counts as public land and when I spoke to the dog welfare team, the animal welfare team about all of these options, he said that to get, we, we don't, we can't make a new, it used to be something called, um, I can't remember, like a dog control and now it's like if it's a public, it, the, the council could just dog specific ones and they brought them all under the umbrella of public spaces, something orders, um, and because it's a public space, we would have to get a public space order, and that's done by county council. And county council, he says, people have tried. His experience, in his experience, he says it was extremely difficult to achieve because you have to show that the um, the measure that you're proposing, because obviously that's a restriction on public use of a public space, even though it's as I appreciate owned by the parish council, um, is proportionate to the outcome, and that you've got to. He says it's very difficult to show. That what you're suggesting is going to actually have the effect you want to, to limit dogs. I know it sounds ridiculous because a lot of you think no dogs, no mess, but he says he, his experience of people trying to do it is that it's quite high. It, I mean, it's not that we can't try it, I think we've discussed this before, but we could definitely attempt it. But that his experience was that he would find that there were it was a high hurdle to, to jump. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. You know, I, I just uh, I have never heard it mentioned about moving the footpath oh, so no. that so that it you could fence so off, that it was then separated the, the thing. You could fence it off, and, and I think you would still need this public order to say people couldn't go on the, the whole of the ground. So we couldn't exclude because if it's a counts as a public space, we don't limit access to it. That it's. I, don't know, I, I think I don't see the villagers deciding that there are so many villagers now that use the entire field to walk their dogs suddenly accepting that they can't. And, um, again, this 
links into the biodiversity group with uh, other elements. Um, but it, uh, it, if it's something that you have looked at, that's uh, that's fine. I can take that back to the biodiversity group. I have an experience with rugby clubs, and they are sometimes on you know, public spaces, but open spaces for people to walk dogs. And they use um, tight, tight blue rope around the pitches with a good gap, you know, the spectator gap, and they just have signs on keep your dog off the pitch. And it would, while it wouldn't be enforceable, it, it, it is, you know, because there's a blue blue line there, the dog wants to go in there, they know it shouldn't be there. And I did, I did mention this last year, but... I think it's one of those things, it, it's, it's, it's so difficult because there's, there's such a, you know, the football team are only, I know there's children on the field a lot of the time, but the football's only playing once a week at the best, you know, in the busiest <laughs> times. And then you say to the people who walk the dogs every day, like there's a huge section of the field, you can't leave, it's really a difficult one. Also, consider, it is prime, the, fi the whole field is primarily the recreation field with occasional football field. Yeah. Occasional, we allow them to play football on there. Mm -hmm. well, well, I did mention uh, when I, before I became the parish chancellor that a dog exercising area, like a, you know, a, a gated fenced area would be a really good idea. That may change people's habits, you know. And then, and then again, you can put a sign up and say, "If you are walking your dog on the field, keep it on the lead." Mm -hmm. I like the theory, but I, I, I just say there's a custom on practice. Actually, okay. with, with I think you. what he's suggesting is is a practical uh, thing that could be tried out, and there's actually nothing stuck me from doing it um, because it doesn't stop anybody going on the field if they so it insist. Doesn't. It doesn't have, I think we've always, we've, all, we've discussed these, we've discussed various variations a lot of times. I think every time we get to the point that the good dog owners will respect what we do and will stop, but the good dog owners are already picking up. The bad dog owners who don't pick up are also not going to respect the rules that we put in place. So you're not going to win, you're just going to punch the good dog owners, and that's what we've always come to, I think that's what well, we've always felt. Yeah, then with respect, why are we on the phone about it? Because mm -hmm. we're not going to do anything. When you sorry, potentially going to write to Jan or speak to Jan about the, um, <coughs> they've sectioned off a piece of land that's, um, I believe, sort of on between, say, Nelson's and the road, um, is it Coastal View? I can't quite remember. There's an area of land that they have sectioned off for dog walkers. So at, at the same time, maybe just ask if it's being successful because they've had the same problem with um, dog fouling on the pitch and things. So if they've had an improvement, then that's... Long Fremont has a dog exercise area down towards uh, Hightown Estate. So do you know where the play park is? There's the park, the public park area. There's, yeah. there's a keep your dog off the pitch there, but, but, but they have an exercise area for the dog. And you go, they can have the dogs off the weeds and the dog gate and safe and, and stuff like that. But I just wonder whether we would have... Have we got a big enough field? Well, you just use the perimeter outside of the yeah. football field. There's a. Oh, I mean, if you, just, if you just if you just mark off the football field, the rest of it's still available. I think one of the things is because of the CCTV is an ongoing cost. <clears throat> you do seriously have to look at other alternatives of, of of trying to achieve the same thing. Because from my understanding, the CCTV is really very limited to what it can see. Um, and whether or not you can actually, um, when, when and people do know that, and, and they'll potentially sort of still carry on doing what they're doing. So I, all I'm saying is that there's, if you're looking at one, you actually do have to bring in other options for your cost analysis. Thank you. The other area. Items for next agenda. Anything? Anybody in particular? Anything interesting? Uninteresting? Okay. Date of next meeting, 16 June 2022. Thank you, Meeting closed, set past nine.